Today we are going over my top 45 fantasy football rankings for this year. I have combed through every piece of data that my big brain can possibly handle over the last six, seven, eight months. Super Bowl ends, I'm back in the lab. And this is the culmination of that. This is a sheet from within our draft guide, which I'll explain how to get later if you are still interested in it. If you have the draft guide, obviously the three columns to the right are not blurred out. But today, Marketing 101, we're going through the first 45 of them, okay? Before we do so, in order to prepare, let's tuck our shirts in. Oh, y'all didn't think I just filmed a video and already had it tucked in? I didn't even know. I forgot. It's become so natural to me that, that the shirt just stays tucked in at all times. Tony played the intro. So I won't go through every single player in depth. And again, this is a uh, half PPR format, not full PPR. There are also super flex rankings in the draft guide, but these are one quarterback. These are half PPR rankings for you. The first four are wide receivers. We have Jefferson, we have Chase, we have Tyree Kill, we have Diggs. I just feel very, very comfortable with any of those four dudes being the first guy picked on my team if I have a priority pick. Now, I know some of these guys are going to differ. Like Diggs is usually a guy who goes in like the, the eighth pick or the ninth pick or something like that. But I he is my wide receiver four, and I feel like he is just as good as the other guys going in that range. I would rather have the other ones, obviously. But Jefferson's my one, Chase is my two, Tyree Kill is my three. Ain't no questions about it. Then we hit the running back tier. We have C-Mac at five. We have Chubb at six. We have Saquon at seven. We have eight Bijan. All right, so I don't think you can go wrong with any of those guys. I think I think all four of them have upside to hit that league-winning number of averaging over 20 half PPR points per game. Chubb is going to have the entire backfield to himself without Kareem Hunt there. I expect him to be a very, very good offense. Saquon, we've already seen him go for 2,000 yards from scrimmage, and he's back fully healthy. Obviously, Bijan is the next coming of Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior in Atlanta, Super Bowl Runs through the ATL. And C-Mac is obviously C-Mac. Now, I have Kelsey ranked number nine here. And I'm not someone who typically takes tight ends in the first round. So maybe I should have thrown him a little bit lower. Though he's just the number one receiver for the number one quarterback on planet Earth. Okay? So I try not to think too hard about it. But again, I, I this is more just like rankings who I think is going to have the most fantasy points at the end of the day. It doesn't really take into consideration like roster construction. We've done a bunch of draft strategy videos up to this point in the summer. We've done it from picks one through six, seven through 12. The number one pick, the number 12 pick, you can find all those on the channel if you just type in draft strategy or whatever. Most of the time, I'm laying off Travis Kelsey this high in the rankings. I just don't like to build my team around tight ends. When you have the guys available after him, like Brown at 10, Eckler at 11, Cup at 12, Garrett Wilson at 13, CeeDee Lamb at 14. What I'm really trying to do here um, at like the turn, if you're in the back half of the round, is try to pair an elite running back with an elite wide receiver. Like if you have the 11, 12, 13, 14 or whatever, you're typically able to get like a Saquon or a Bijan or an Eckler and then pair it with Garrett Wilson or Cooper Cup or CeeDee Lamb, right? Like that's where I really want to be living at in this area. The next group of guys too here are really fucking talented players and I'd be happy to have them in the second round. So you have Derrick Henry at 15 where I was a little bit worried about like how this offense is going to be put together, but I think they were able to, as they always are, be resourceful and put a good team on the field, right? Because you have Tannehill, who's veteran. He's not going to really do much for your offense, but he'll make sure that they are sustainable. And the offense is going to run through Derrick Henry again. They have D-Hop, they got Traylon Burks, they got Chiggy. Tajay Spears is actually a nice little like secondary piece in that backfield that they will be able to trust to like spell Henry a little bit, where I don't think we've had that at all throughout Derrick Henry's career. So Derrick Henry, yeah, he's getting old, and I'm sure the cliff is coming very, 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 very soon. But I'd be fine with him this year. Tony Pollard, Josh Jacobs both have, you know, crazy upside as well. I like Pollard more just because I think I like the offense more. He's more explosive. Jacobs obviously coming off the monster year, but Jacobs is playing in Las Vegas, which is why I have both him and Devontae Adams down here at 17, 18. I am just I am just nervous that that entire team is going to implode and affect everybody on it. But he's still Devontae fucking Adams. So at 18, which is like the 206, I'm comfortable with him. I'm also comfortable with this entire tier of receivers right underneath him. We have Amara, Chris Olave, Jalen Waddell. Wouldn't be surprised if any of those three ended up being a top five fantasy wide receiver this year. Amon Ra is going to be the focal point of that Detroit offense, especially for the first 16 with Jameson Williams out. He might actually see 13 targets a game. Chris Olave, I think, is on the precipice of being a superstar in this league. I have very little confidence that Michael Thomas is going to be anything more than like a 60 for 805 to six touchdown guy, which is a nice complimentary piece. But Olave seems to be like an elite route runner, really, really 
next step is superstardom, like into that Diggs range. And then Jalen Waddle, we saw him basically lead the NFL, every receiver category in efficiency, yards per reception, yards per target, all that stuff. Tua was deadly accurate, and this offense is going to, there's no one else to give the ball to besides Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. Like that is it right there. Those two are going to both have 140 plus targets this year. Then we have the tier of QBs. Like if I'm in the third round, I have them ranked within the second round. You normally don't have to take them in the second round, but I'm looking to grab Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, whatever order. I'd be happy with any of those three. I have them here at this tier before we move on to like other skill players. But that is how high I am on them. Even in one QB leagues, I want one of those three guys on my team because they are huge difference makers. They average 25, 26, 27 points per game. Back in the day, it'd be cool to just like stream a QB and be like, oh, I can get Derek Carr at quarterback 18, who's a Saints quarterback. But Derek Carr is going to average eight, nine, 10 points less per game than the top quarterbacks. And that is that is a huge difference. So I have those QBs ranked all the way up there, 22, 23, 24. Then you have a string of these next wide receivers. We have Devontae Smith at 25, Calvin Ridley at 26, T. Higgins at 27. Uh, Devontae Smith is another one like Chris Olave, where I feel pretty confident he is like on the precipice of superstardom. It'll happen one year. I'm not sure which year because A.J. Brown is there and he is basically just like if Devontae Smith ate Devontae Smith, you would spit out A.J. Brown. But Devontae Smith, if he popped off for 1,500 yards this year receiving, wouldn't surprise me. Calvin Ridley is the number one for Trevor Lawrence, and Trevor Lawrence is going to take a huge step forward this year. I have extreme confidence in Calvin Ridley being the alpha there in the Jacksonville offense, which I think is going to run so smoothly. T. Higgins, you know you're getting there. I have Aaron Jones ranked way higher than most people do. He's all the way up at 28 for me, which is like the 304. He is my RB10. A lot of that has to do with like more question marks at the running back position than actual answers, whereas like Ramondre, if they they didn't sign Zeke would be ahead of him. And then Jonathan Taylor, you know, on the pup list, like all these things kind of happened to push Aaron Jones up. I still think like he is barely, he played one snap in the first preseason game, one snap in the second preseason game, rested th- like they, they're bubble wrapping him. I think he's going to be a huge, huge part of this passing offense coming off of a career year in the receiving categories there. So Aaron Jones, I know he's getting older, but I'm, I'm very much in an, another top 10 campaign for Aaron Jones at the fantasy running back position. After Jones, we got Fields at 29, who I get it. Like, he might not be a great quarterback, but like he, it, this is not like Trey Lance. This is not like dudes that were just project- – he already just had a top five fantasy QB finish, and then they added offensive line, and then they added weapons to the outside. Like, I don't understand what more he needs to prove in order to show you that he's going to be a good fantasy quarterback. I don't care – If he ends up being the future, like the face of the franchise for Chicago, he's about to be the face of the franchise for my fucking fantasy teams. After him, we got Ramondre, who I still think is going to catch a ton of passes out there in New England, even with Zeke there. So I'm cool with him. Uh, Damian Pierce has taken every single snap with the starter. So he's all the way up there at 31, where you could usually grab him in the fifth or sixth round of leagues. So my rankings differ from ADP. My rankings are calling my shots on my guys, the guys I think based on the way I've been following football and the way I've been following preseason snaps and the way I've been following everything, they are dialed in. I am motherfucking, I'm so dialed in. Hold on. You want to know how fucking dialed in I am? This box smells horrible. This is how fucking dialed in I am. Do you see this? Dial. Dial. Nine. One. One. If you don't have a fucking rotary phone in your damn office or your house, you're not dialed in like I am. You want to know how Nikki Leaks gets his sources? Through this fucking phone. You think we're not bringing landlines back? Oh my God, you got something coming. Okay, so the rankings are dialed in. And if you've enjoyed the video up to this point and you trust me and you want my rankings, there are two ways to get them. They're both in the draft guide, but there are two ways to get the draft guide. One, at full price, okay? On BDGE. Dot shop bdg.shop is our shopify store but you can purchase it full price 25 dollars straight from there it's got all the rankings for the leagues and the must drafts and the and the fade players and all that kind of shit but cheap 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 discount much bigger discount ten dollars only so we're talking about like a 65 percent discount if you go to underdogfantasy.com or you download the underdog fantasy app which is linked down below and you use promo code bdge okay you download the underdog fantasy app and you use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more, they're one, going to double whatever you put down on the platform. So if you throw 20 down, you're going to have 40 in your account. We're doing pick-em slips all season long, so you might as well get on there now. But they're also going to email you out the draft guide absolutely free, which has your rankings. There's nothing else you need for your fantasy draft besides the draft guide. So go to Underdog Fantasy, the app, download it, deposit $10 or more with the code BDGE, and things are going to be good. You will be dialed in, all right? We are trying to dial everybody in. I just realized you guys probably couldn't even see that. Wait, could you? Oh, my God, no. 
No, you were hiding behind the rankings. I just realized that whole time you guys were hiding behind the rankings, but you damn right, we got a fucking rotary phone. This is devastating. This is devastating. Like I have the sheet up. It's part of the software now, so I can't take this away. Oh, oh, that was such a good bit. It was so good. All right, continue on. We must. Um, Damian Pierce, love that motherfucker playing every single snap, third and long, fourth and long, doesn't matter. He's going to be the workhorse in an improved Houston offense. Mark Andrews at 32, DK Metcalf at 33, Amari Cooper at 34, Joe Burrow at 35, Lamar Jackson at 36. So I think those are pretty standard. Those guys there, they're typically back of the third round, mid third round guys that kind of start to just fill up the non elite parts of your roster, but still really, really solid players like Cooper, Metcalf, those guys, I kind of feel like you know what you're getting. You're probably getting 70 catches. You're probably getting 1,000 yards, anywhere from six to 10 touchdowns on a good year. And then you start getting lower down the list. Once you hit the fourth round, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of hitting your guys. You're kind of saying like, these are the guys that I expect to have major roles. These are the guys that are maybe young with a ton of upside that might be on the precipice of breaking out. Like I have Joe Mixon at 37, so that's the four one. He's just going to be the, uh, the 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 thumper again in the Cincinnati offense that scores so many fucking points. Like, I don't think he's a good player, but they're going to use him on the goal line. And would it surprise me if he scored another 12 rushing touchdowns? Not at all. Would it surprise me if he scored six touchdowns and ruined your fantasy team? Also, no, but I trust in the Cincinnati offense. So give me the guy who they tr kind of trust, I guess. Not a great argument there. The next bunch of guys are these wide receivers that I absolutely love. So as you can see, like the four, the three, four turn, three, four turn into the fourth, into the fifth round. I really like these young wide receivers. Like we have Brandon Ayuk, who I think is going to break out this year. Christian Watson, who I really like the chemistry I've seen with Jordan Love and Christian Watson. Chris Godwin, severely underrated. Now two years removed from the ACL tear. I think him and Baker are actually weird enough to say going to make a little magic out there. Keenan Allen's at the bottom of this list. I'm 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 hesitant to draft Keenan Allen. I'm I'm scared that we might have seen the cliff coming for him and I I don't know that I want to buy into it now. And I think the reason too that makes me a little bit nervous is when you look at the young up and coming talent around him. Like, all right, you have Keenan Allen there, but then you have Ayuk, Watson, Godwin, DJ Moore right behind him, Drake London a couple picks after that. And then you ask yourself like, okay, do I take the chance on Keenan Allen? Like if there were no other good options there, are there no guys with like real upside that I thought I think could be needle movers on your team? Maybe I go with Keenan Allen there and just risk the fact that maybe he's not as pure of a route runner as he was in the last few years. Because I, I do a lot of digging and one of the resources I love is Matt Harmon's reception perception. If you guys follow me, you probably know what that is. He does great work charting wide receiver routes and he basically dives in and he, and he shoots out these tables of like success rate versus man coverage, zone coverage, press coverage, or whatever. And Keenan Allen had been elite basically his entire career. He's a dude who is in like the 90th to 95th percentile in terms of separating from man and press. Last year, that number dipped off pretty dramatically. And I'm nervous that they add Quentin Johnson, and they have Mike Williams there, and they have Eckler, of course. So, like, does his receiving workload come down? Is he as good? Is he good enough to separate on the outside as he was years ago? I don't think it's there, but I do believe in the guys above him. So I'm probably taking those other dudes above Keenan Allen, despite having him ranked this high. So we have DJ Moore at 42, ETN and Najee Harris at 43, 44, Drake London at 45, and that wraps up the top 45 rankings for me. Uh, you guys are welcome to drop any feedback. You guys are welcome to argue and yell at me. You guys, I will put the link to this rotary phone in the description so we can all get motherfucking dialed in for the year. You guys are clearly not dialed in. The number one way to get dialed in outside of getting a goddamn rotary phone is to go get the draft guide. All right. The draft guide is available right now on bdge.shop at full price or downloading the underdog fantasy app, depositing $10 or more. With promo code BDGE, BDGE. Realize you guys can't see that either. God damn it, Nicholas. You done did it again. And that'll get you emailed the draft guide for free, plus double deposit match on your underdog account. I love y'all, and I am out of here. Good luck with your drafts if you have them this weekend.